Hello and welcome to today's lecture on storage technology. We have already discussed about uh, cache memory, main memory, which are used as memory devices of a computer system. And if you look at the hierarchical memory organization, uh, particularly the virtual memory system that you have discussed in the last couple of lectures, you will find that uh, secondary storage uh, is the last component in that hierarchical memory organization and storage technology provides that secondary storage. And so, our discussion will not be complete without considering storage technology. Uh, we shall discuss about different types of devices which are used in uh, secondary storage uh, like magnetic disks, optical disks, magnetic tapes, class memories and uh, nowadays uh, solid state disks. And in, the, in another lecture, we shall discuss about how we can improve the reliability by discussing multiple disks together and different red levels, red, red level 0 to 66. And uh, let, uh, today, let us uh, primarily focus on the different types of technologies used to build uh, secondary storage. So, magnetic disks uh, were introduced back in 1965 and perhaps surprisingly they are still ubiquitous hard drives. So, if you look at any computer system, you will find hard disk is always present and uh, that has become ubiquitous with the computer systems. And this is the bread and butter of storage in desktop and server systems. So, without uh, magnetic disk, no computer system. Uh, can be built or we, we, we cannot see nowadays. And uh, magnetic disks are used for long term storage, uh, non volatile storage for data. Non volatile means when even when the power is re removed, information will be retained. And this has already provided uh, the additional level of memory hierarchy, memory hierarchy through virtual memory system that we have already discussed. So, these are the different features of magnetic disks. Number one, as I said, uh, it is non volatile, disk storage is non volatile, and it consists of a collection of platters. So, platters means uh, different disks, you can say, with uh, two surfaces, and each platter has magnetic material uh, on both sides. So, uh, you can say this is a platter. Circular disk and uh, magnetic material is deposited on both sides. And as a consequence, the total number of record, uh, recordable surfaces is 2 into number of platters. So, number of platters that you are having will decide how much memory you can, how much information you can store, instruction or data, whatever it may be. And the platter size uh, is, I mean the diameter is in the range of 3 to 4 inches, smaller uh, sizes are also available, but uh, this is the common size uh, 3 to 4 inches. Normally 3.5 inches is the diameter of the magnetic disks and bigger sizes can be used for uh, performance and smaller for cost. So, smaller the diameter, it will be cheaper and larger the diameter, it will provide you better performance. And the rotational speed uh, is in the range of 3.6 uh, k, that means 36,000 revolutions per minute to 15,000 revolutions per minute. And actually, the, uh, the performance is gradually improving. And this is a magnetic disk. As you can see, you have read write heads. These are the read write heads, and each uh, each of them is representing a platter. And as you can see, each plate is having two sides. That means one and two corresponds to two sides of platter one. Three and four corresponds to two sides of platter two. Five and six corresponds to 
uh, the uh, two sides of platter uh, 3 and so on. Of course, the last platter you cannot really access the bottom uh, side that is why only 11, uh, uh, 11 surface is shown, 12 surface is not accessible. So, this is how uh, I mean magnetic disk is organized. You have got a number of uh, such platters providing you 2 into uh, number of platters that is the number of surfaces available. And the way information is written on magnetic disk is shown in this particular diagram. Uh, this is that disk surface which rotates at a particular speed which, which you have seen uh, it rotates uh, and it is that disk is uh, placed just under a read write head. So, this is that read write head there is a coil uh, that is an electromagnet that means if current passes through it, it will be magnetized in a particular direction and because of that magnetization the iron particles will get oriented uh, in, a, in a particular way depending on the current flowing in that uh, electromagnet, direction of the current flowing in that uh, electromagnet. For example, before uh, the disk surface come under the comes under the um, electromagnet, you can see the iron particles are haphazardly distributed. There is no orientation of the iron particles. However, as it uh, passes through the read write head, uh, the iron particle the iron particles gets oriented in a uh, particular way depending on the current direction. So, uh, the, this is the current direction now. So, bit 0 is written and disk is uh, moving in that direction. Similarly, bit 1 is written when current passes in the opposite direction. So, uh, in this particular case current is passing in the opposite direction. So, bit 1 is written. So, in this way uh, as the medium rotates the head can write data on the surface. It can write bit, bit 1, bit 0 and so on uh, one after the other on the disk surface. Uh, reading can be done uh, in a similar way. In such a case what happens uh, the, the, as, the, uh, as the disk moves under the I mean already written data moves under the surface, it induces current in this coil and uh, depending on the direction of the uh, current in this coil, you can read uh, uh, 0 or 1. So, this is how reading and writing take place uh, on the magnetic surface with the help of a read write uh, coil uh, by placing it on top of the magnetic surface. So, one point you should note uh, at this juncture at this point you can see the read write head is coming in physical contact with the magnetic surface as a consequence there is wear and tear. So, there will be wear and tear because that magnetic surface is coming in close contact uh, here for example, this is the electromagnet. So, uh, the, it, the, it will be come in physical contact as a consequence the, the magnetical magnetic <coughs> material will get uh, uh, I mean eroded with time that is the reason why the life of a magnetic disk is not very long. <coughs> so, this is how reading and writing takes place. Uh, uh, there is a concept called formatting to make the read uh, the disk I mean to for storing information on the disk a technique known as formatting is used. That means, before a magnetic disk is used for uh, storing data it is formatted. And formatting is a, is a process that maps the disk surface and determines how data can be written. So, uh, disk surface uh, uh, is uh, earlier it is a uh, I mean non I mean it is a uh, uh, without any de demarcation about where you can store data which part has to be kept free. But as it is formatted, then it, dis it identifies on which particular area you can store data and in which particular area you have to keep blank and you have to keep gap. So, during formatting each platter is divided into tracks and around the, around the disk surface. So, you will find there are tracks. So, will be this is one track, a circular ring, this is another track. So, in this way uh, up to certain I mean certain uh, distance up closer to the center the writing can be done. 
So, uh, in this way, uh, this is the track 0 and this will be the track say n. So, you can have n tracks, uh, n plus 1 tracks. So, if it is n minus 1, there will be n tracks on the surface and uh, the number of tracks is increasing with the advancement of technology as you can see it can vary from 10 k to 15 k tracks per surface. On a single surface you can have 10,000 to 50,000 tracks. So, quite a large number of surface uh, I mean tracks uh, you can have on the magnetic surface actually that depends on the resolution of the read write head. Smaller it is it can you can store on a smaller uh, area of the surface. Then each track is divided into sectors. So, uh, suppose this is one track and this track is divided into a number of sectors. So, this is one sector, this is another sector, this is another sector, this is another sector. So, in this way you have a number of logical sectors. So, you are dividing into a number of sectors and the total number of sectors per track can vary from 100 to 500. So, you, have, you can have 100 to 500 sectors per track and a sector is the smallest unit that can be accessed. That means, whenever you are reading uh, data from disk or writing data into the disk, so minimum unit that you can access is a sector. That means, a sector uh, can be read uh, or more than one sector can be read. So, multiple of sectors can be read. and on a single sector you can have 512 bytes to 4 k bytes of uh, data per sector. So, this is the typical value the number of bytes that you can store on a sector varies from 512 bytes to 4 k bytes. So, this gives you uh, some information about a disk and some more and here uh, a formatted disk is shown. You can see uh, this is a disk surface shown. And, uh, uh, the as I said that outer track is the 0th track. So, this is the 0th track and uh, 0th track is divided into a number of sectors 0, 1, 2, 3. So, in this particular example there are 18 sectors, uh, 18 sectors per track and uh, the number of uh, uh, sectors on each track is same irrespective of whether it is closer to the center or that means, it is same in the 0th track and, uh, and the nth track. That means, number of sectors per track is identical. So, you can see various sectors on it on different tracks are shown. So, this is how logically a disk surface is uh, I mean used and where you can store information. So, uh, this part the central part is used for holding this uh, disk uh, on the uh, disk system because you have to firmly hold it, so that it can be rotated at a particular speed. And there are four areas defined uh, at the time of formatting uh, that operating system creates four areas on the surface. Number one area is known as the boot sector. So, it, it stores the master boot record, a small program that runs when you first start the computer. That means, uh, normally you know whenever you uh, put a disk and start the computer, the boot sector is read and boot, boot sector is used for the purpose of uh, I mean bringing the system up. Second is your file allocation table. So, that is a log that records each file's location and each sector status. That means, in a, so far as the uh, so far uh, a programmer is concerned, he is concerned about files, he stored different files and they, these files are to be mapped to different tracks and different sectors of a track. That mapping is done and uh, that information is stored in this file allocation table or FAT. Then third, uh, 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 third area is uh, uh, root folder, it enables the user to store data on the disk in a logical way uh, and finally, you have got data area, it is the portion of the disk that is that actually holds data. So, you can say uh, those boot sector 
file allocation table, root folder, these are overhead. Only area where information data can be stored is the data area. As you can see in this diagram, different areas are shown. So, uh, that boot sector is that green, green portion is the boot sector, then is that file allocation table fat, that red, red track and that file allocation table is duplicated for the purpose of re, I mean higher redundancy. So, uh, there are two file allocation tables stored uh, as you can see two fat, fat copy 1, fat copy 2. Then root directory that blue uh, circle, blue track is showing the, so you have started in this way, first the boot sector, then the fat, then the second copy of the fat, then it goes to the second track where you are storing the uh, root directory, root directory is being stored, root directory is stored. So, th th these are the components which is essentially overhead and information is stored only in this part of the uh, disk. <coughs> now, uh, in the past all tracks had the same number of sectors as I have already mentioned and this made it easier to implement, uh, implement means for instance reading a sector on a track required the same angle of allocation rotation. So, earlier what was being done? As you have seen, this is the track closer to the center and this is another track which is at the outmost uh, layer uh, of the disk. So, this is the disk. So, we have seen that you have you are dividing into a sector. So, for the so, this is one sector, this is one as another sector and this is one sector. You can see that that length of this which is away from the center is more than the length of this part where uh, which is closer to the center. So, the bit density is different uh, in different tracks. As you go away from the center, the bit density is smaller compared to the bit density which is of the, on the track which is closer to the center. So, that is because of this this particular technique where all tracks have the same number of sectors. So, this means that bit density was lower on the outer tracks than that of the inner tracks as I have mentioned. Now, uh, subsequently uh, with the introduction of zone bit recording varying number of sectors per track can be used. So, this is the this is one uh, innovation which was used to increase the uh, capacity of a uh, disk. So, capacity expressed as the aerial density measured in uh, bits per square inch is improving. So, aerial density is essentially aerial density which is representative of the uh, capacity per unit area, I mean unit inch that, that, that is actually tracks per surface on a disk into uh, bits per inch on a track. So, this gives you the, the, the parameter aerial, aerial density and actually it, speci it specifies the uh, number of bits that you can store uh, per unit area. And this is improving over time as you can see uh, in the in the starting from the year 1988 to 1996 the increase in aerial density was 29 percent. Then from 96 to 1996 to 2003 the improvement was 60 percent per year and from 2003 onwards uh, to recent years it is 100 percent per year. So, that means, every year the aerial density was doubling. So, uh, you can see it is even uh, I mean better than the Moore's law. However, currently uh, the, uh, the rate of increase has dropped and it is only 29 percent per year uh, 
uh, th this is the rate at which the aerial density is increasing. So, you can see whenever you are using uh, uh, this type of innovations like zone beat recording and so on, you are able to increase the uh, capacity of a disk and the rate of improvement is quite, uh, quite uh, high as you can see. <coughs> now, how, how you are performing reading and writing? So, there is an arm with a read write head for each recorded surface. So, there is a support, separate read write head you can see this is shown here, separate read write head uh, uh, which is available for each surface. So, uh, all heads on the same track on all surfaces. So, uh, what is what happens that all the heads move together. So, that means what happens uh, your read write head if this is the read write head if it is pointing to track number 0. So, it can move in this direction track sorry track number 0 is this one uh, track 0, track 1 in this way it can move with the help of uh, motor that is called stepper motor. With the help of a stepper motor the read write head is positioned on different tracks of a surface and uh, this read write uh, head assembly you can say you can all the heads on different surfaces move together. So, if you have got say uh, n platters, you, you will be having uh, 2 n read write heads, all will move together uh, on different surfaces. Of course, you may say 2 n minus 1 because the last platter uh, the which is uh, at the bottom will not have one surface will uh, one surface will not be available. So, you will be having 2 n minus 1 read write heads which will be reading uh, and writing on the surface. Now, those set of tracks is called cylinder. What, what is a cylinder? Uh, actually, the concept of cylinder is coming in this way. Suppose, this is one platter, then uh, at the bottom of his there is another platter, then there is another platter, then there is another platter. In this way you have got large number of patterns. Now, let us consider the read write head is positioned to track number i. So, track number of i of this platter on both surfaces, then the track number of i of the of the, of the other uh, platter on the same track. So, all will form a kind of cylinder. So, essentially you can read from this particular track of the of, the, of this particular uh, platter and from this platter also you can read together. So, these are forming a kind of cylinder. So, that is why the concept of cylinder has come in because different tracks on different uh, plates is forming a kind of cylinder. So, to read write a sector uh, the disk controller sends a comment that causes the arm to move over the proper track. So, this operation is called SICK. So, the there, the there are different type of times you will encounter. The first one is known, uh, known as the SICK time. What is SICK time? SICK time is the time to position a read write head on a particular track. So, initially you know uh, that read write head can be arbitrarily positioned. Then it is then read write head is uh, withdrawn and whenever it reaches 0, zero th, uh, read, uh, track from there it starts moving towards other tracks with the help of that uh, stepper motor. So, sick time is a time required for positioning time required to position on a on a particular track. Then <coughs> uh, the sick time is one of the important performance measures for ma magnetic disks. Since it is a very important performance measure, there is confusion about its definition. So, people will specify about minimum sick time, maximum sick time, average sick time. So, uh, people will get conf confused which one you have to take because 
uh, minimum sick time means uh, the minimum amount of time if the head rate rewrite head is very close to the zeroth track then sick time will be small if it is very close to the uh, center then you have to uh, take it back towards the zeroth track and the the uh, the uh, sick time will be longer so that is the reason why minimum sick time maximum sick time and average sick time these are recorded these are uh, reported the first two are easy to measure uh, because uh, it, it depends on the actual position at a particular of the read write head uh, at a particular position so here as you can see the read write head uh, is here so you have to move to the zeroth track so this is the zeroth track and this is the nth track so uh, uh, then it will take longer time when uh, on the other hand if the uh, tra the and the read write head is at the zeroth track then the sick time will be smaller so average sick time is computed over all possible sicks so you can the read write head can be at any uh, on a part on any uh, one of the tracks of the end tracks and as a consequence you, you have to take the average of them so the sick time can vary between 5 millisecond to 15 millisecond these days nowadays uh, the improve um, in spite of the improvements it is of the order of millisecond because mechanical motor uh, is involved in the process of uh, i mean pressing a uh, uh, read write head on a particular track and that is the reason why uh, it, it the values uh, uh, i mean varying between 5 millisecond to 15 millisecond and obviously this time is a very long time for a cpu you know nowadays uh, processors are operating at the rate of few gigahertz so you can see this uh, 15 millisecond or even 5 millisecond is too long a time so for example for 5 gigahertz cpu 5 millisecond means 20 million clock cycles so just for uh, positioning the track positioning the read write head on a particular track it will take 20 million clock cycles that is too long a time so an application sees lower sick time due to locality of course although this is the uh, i mean worst case time you can say but in practice uh, because of the principle of locality actual sick time will be much lower it has been reported that the actual sick time is about 30% of the of the specified sick time so computing sick time is not straight forward the arm speed is not constant another very important uh, parameter is uh, the the uh, the read write head i mean which is holding the the read write head is held by arm this is called a arm that arm speed of that arm is not constant so it speeds up and slows down because in the beginning it will be having slow speed then uh, you know just like you know you are driving a car initially speed will be low then uh, the speed will it will pick up then as you try to stop it it will slow down so it is a motor so the arm may stop to reduce the vibration so uh, it may be allowed to stop without giving power so that the vibration is not present and another uh, parameter is ro rotational latency so first parameter is sick time second is rotational latency what is rotational latency we have seen that Uh, sick time is the time required to position a read write head on a particular track now uh, you have to place it on a particular sector because that uh, uh, that file uh, i mean uh, which is mapping to tracks and sectors in terms of tracks and sectors to read data you have to position not only on a track you have to position on, on a particular sector so on a particular track you have to bring your read write head on a particular sector so that is actually decided by the uh, rotational latency and uh, average rotation time uh, is roughly half of the 
uh, worst case time that is your 0.5 by 10,000 rpm if you see the speed is 10,000 revolutions per minute. So, that is roughly equal to 3 millisecond. So, you can see rotational laten latency uh, is of the order of 3 millisecond. So, we may say that this is of the order of 3 millisecond and this can vary from uh, uh, 5 millisecond to less. So, it may be 5 millisecond or 4 millisecond like that. Now, comes the another parameter that is your transfer time. So, the time to transfer a sector from the magnetic material to the head. So, that means you have position a read write head on a particular sector. Now, you have to read it that read write head will read it and transfer it to the through that uh, uh, through the uh, from the there is a controller through the controller it will send to the processor. So, the transfer time is the time uh, to transfer a sector from the magnetic material to the head and it depends on the sector size, disk size, rotation speed, width density, speed of the electronics uh, at the head uh, and the disk controller. So, you can see this transfer time is depend is dependent on a number of uh, parameters uh, and these parameters will decide the uh, transfer time and typical value is in the range of 40 to 120 megabits per seconds. So, this is the speed at which the data transfer will take place after the read write head has been positioned, positioned on a particular track and then on a particular sector and after that this is the rate at which data transfer will take place from the read write head to the processor. So, you can say that average access time then your transfer time. So, there are three, three components and you can say that average uh, disk access time it has got several components one is average seek time plus average rotational delay. plus transfer time and there is some overhead uh, because of the controller. Controller is holding some electronics and that controller will uh, take some time to uh, transfer the data to the CPU. So, this is the average disk access time comp comprising four components average seek time, average rotational delay, transfer time plus controller overhead. So, you have to take into account all these four components whenever you find out you try to uh, calculate the average disk access, disk access time. So, uh, let us consider an example to uh, crystallize the idea. Let us assume that average seek time is 5 millisecond rotational speed is 10,000 uh, revolutions per minute, number of bytes per sector is 512, number of sectors per track is 500, transfer rate is 50 megabits per second and controller megabytes per second, uh, everything is specified in terms of bytes and controller overhead is quite small 0 0.01 millisecond. Now, considering uh, I mean with the help of these parameters you can calculate what is the time required to transfer a file uh, from the uh, disk to a processor. So, question is what is the time to read a file consisting of 2500 sectors. So, let us to calculate let us try to calculate this. So, <coughs> we, we can calculate in this way time to read the first track. So, that will it will vary from track to track. So, after it has been positioned on the first track, 
then subsequent tracks can be easily accessed because seek time will be 0 for other tracks. So, that is why time to read the first track is separately considered that will consist of 5 millisecond assuming that seek time is 5 millisecond, then the rotational delay is 3 millisecond, then the time to read say 500 sectors, we know we have seen that there are 500 sectors per track and to calculate to time required to transfer 500 sector is will be even calculated and you will find that it is again 5 millisecond and, uh, and then you have got that controller overhead which is 0 0.1 millisecond. So, this is the total time that will read uh, the first track comprising 500 sectors and this is equal to 13.110, uh, 13.1 millisecond. Now, you have, uh, the, you have other 4 tracks. So, time to read the second track, second and subsequent tracks you can say. will be equal to this, this will no longer be present. So, this will be equal to 3 millisecond plus 5 millisecond plus 0 0.1 millisecond. So, that means, this will be equal to 8.1 millisecond. So, total time to transfer uh, 2500 sectors will be equal to, will be equal to 13.1 plus 8.1 4 into 8.1 because if you have to read 5 tracks. Uh, so, 2500 uh, tracks, I mean 2500 sectors and 500 sectors per track. So, you have to uh, read 5 tracks. So, first track will take uh, time required will be 13.1 millisecond, remaining each track will require transfer of data from each track will require 8.1. So, it will be 4 into 8.1 for the remaining 4 tracks. So, those, so, total time will be equal to 45.5 millisecond. So, this is how you can find out the access time for different situations. Now, we shall focus on one very important uh, aspect that you can exploit that is the locality of reference often an application reads consecutive sectors. You see, although uh, a particular file can map to different tracks and different sectors, but usually the a, a particular file is stored in consecutive sectors of a particular track. So, that locality can be exp exploited, special locality and that special locality can be exploited and uh, uh, the technique that is used is known as read ahead. So, most hard drives uh, do uh, used uses uh, read, read ahead. So, what is this? The disk has a buffer that stores sectors after, uh, after the one just read. That means, uh, we have seen that uh, whenever a disk is accessed, minimum unit of access is one sector. Normally, one sector will be transferred then it will re read another sector and so on. But what you are doing in this particular case, you are not only reading one sector, you are reading another sector, you are reading ahead and this can be as large as 4 megabytes and it can be uh, that buffer can be as large as 4 megabytes where you can store uh, subsequent sectors and it is just a cache of sectors. So, we have already discussed about the use of cache memory. So, it is acting as a some kind of cache memory, a buffer where you are um, reading some additional sectors and storing the information of those additional sectors. So, so this can also store sectors that need to be written or, the, uh, or to the disk. So, in this in here not only uh, re reading, you can also do it for writing purpose. That means, you will be uh, writing into the buffer, then you will be transferring to the disk. So, uh, both for reading and writing, you can use this concept of read ahead, which is uh, akin to the concept of cache memory in the, in the context of uh, main memory system. So, transfers to and from the buffer 
are at times restricted by the speed of the IO bus. So, uh, so here uh, you know uh, a particular later on we shall discuss about that a computer system will have several buses. One is CPU memory bus which is the fastest that means the CPU transfers data with the CPU. Another is CPU uh, IO bus. So, it is like this. So, here let us assume you have got CPU and there is a bus and this is the CPU memory bus to which the cache memory and main, main memory systems are connected. So, this is your cache memory and this is your main memory. Now, another bus you can have uh, that is provided by with the help of a IO controller and this will provide another bus known as IO bus. So, this IO bus is relatively smaller uh, I mean uh, slower compared to the CPU memory bus because the rate of transfer uh, of data that takes place through this uh, IO bus is I mean is uh, uh, normally slower IO devices are connected through the IO bus and uh, as you can see here uh, the uh, data rate can be 300 megabytes per second. So, compared to few gigabytes per second here the speed is 300 megabytes per second it is in the burst mode, burst mode means you are transferring all the uh, data together 4 megabytes you are sending one after the other no, not you are re, you are not reading one sector then another sector another sector it is already available in the buffer and from the buffer all the uh, data is transferred in the burst mode. So, this is how you can exploit the locality uh, <coughs> with the help of this read ahead concept. So, this, this gives you the uh, trend uh, for bus drivers, I mean disk drives. You can see here three parameters shown uh, that yellow line corresponds to shipments in uh, PB. So, uh, the, 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 the volume is increasing uh, at a very high rate. The second the uh, pink line corresponds to sales in billions. So, you can see one very important uh, feature, I mean uh, aspect or point you must note here, you can see although the shipment is larger, shipment is increasing because of the drop in price, the sales in billions has remained same. That means, the, the, um, the money uh, that is the transaction of money that is actually taking place is uh, more or less constant over the years. That means, the volume is increasing, price is declining, actual amount that is being uh, trans uh, that uh, uh, involved money that is involved sales in dollars uh, in billions of dollars that is remaining more or less constant. <coughs> so, uh, for this drives 1 PB corresponds to 1000 terabyte. 1 terabyte corresponds to 1000 megabyte and 1 megabyte corresponds to 10, 10 to the power 6 byte. So, you can see we are considering very large numbers, uh, large volume you can say uh, which is told, uh, stated in terms of PB and, uh, and uh, not in terms of terabyte or megabyte. <coughs> so, this is the trend of these drives and this trend has remained more or less same over the years. Now, we shall switch gear and consider another type, another type of disk. So far, we have considered magnetic disks. Now, we shall focus on optical disks. So, uh, many new te technologies have evolved over the years, particularly, uh, but they have not uh, become successful commercially. But this optical disk uh, is the one of the challengers. Uh, to magnetic disk is the optical disk which has become uh, quite success commercially. So, optical disks are quite successful and optical disk is a high capacity storage medium 
an optical drive uses reflected light to read data. So, here reading and writing is taking place with the help of light instead of putting the read write head on top of the magnetic surface, here you are doing the reading and writing with the help of light. As a consequence, wear and tear is uh, uh, not, uh, uh, wear and tear does not exist. We have seen whenever you uh, put the read write head on top of the magnetic surface and when it rotates, there is a wear and tear, which does not exist whenever you do the reading and writing with the help of uh, light. So, to store data, the disk's metal surface is covered with some tiny dents known as pits and flat spots known as lands. So, you have got two types of areas, pits and lands, which cause light to be reflected differently. So, you are trying to read with the help of light and depending on where it is, uh, I mean uh, from where it is getting reflected, from on, uh, if it is on pits, it will reflect in one way, if it is on lands, it will reflect in another way. So, when an optical drive shines light uh, into, the, into a pit, the light cannot be reflected back as we shall see within the next diagram. This represents a 0 bit value and a land reflects light back to the source representing a 1 value. So, this is shown with the help of this diagram. So, in this particular here as you can see, uh, this is the light source, laser source, so which is falling on the land. So, which is representing 1. Since it is uh, falling on a flat surface, it is reflecting the light and then there is a prism which drivers it, uh, which I mean uh, there is a uh, total internal reflection and then it goes through a sensor and that sensor converts it to light to electrical signal and you go get a 1. So, this is how you get a 1. On the other hand, whenever the light is falling on a pit, which is representing bit 0, then what is happening? The, uh, the light is getting scattered in uh, all directions. So, it is not getting reflected uh, like the previous case and as a, as a consequence, there is no, uh, no uh, light present uh, through, uh, that no light will pass through the sensor. So, it is the absence of any signal, light signal is considered at 0. This is how a 1 and 0 can be read. Uh, from the optical disks. <coughs> so, in PCs the most commonly used optical storage technology is called the compact disk or read only memory that is your CD-ROM. So, uh, a standard CD-ROM disk can be can store up to 650 megabyte of data uh, or about 70 minutes of audio. Nowadays, because of the popularity of music and also the popularity of CD-ROM, uh, these two has become uh, very, it is it has become very common to store music on CD-ROM. So, that is why uh, you know uh, instead of megabyte, you are also state, stating in terms of time uh, that is the, uh, uh, the amount of audio signal or music that you can store 70 minutes of audio. So, once data is written into a standard CD-ROM disk, the data cannot be altered or overwritten. So, this is one characteristics of the CD-ROM that means this writing, this writing is uh, cannot be modified. So, some kind of burning uh, has taken place in certain areas. So, with the help of some special device, these pits and lands are created and it is permanent. That is why it is called CD-ROM, compact disk ROM, ROM stands for read only memory, you cannot do the writing. So, early CD-ROM drives were of single speed and read data at a rate of 150 kilobits per se, kilobytes per second, hard disk transfer data rates is about 5 to 15 megabytes per second. So, you can see there is a, there is a significant difference in the uh, rate of transfer of data. So, uh, I mean CD-ROMs are much smaller compared to hard disk in terms of data transfer rate and CD-ROM drives now can transfer data at the rate speed of about 7800 kilobits per second and data transfer speeds are getting faster and faster with time. And CD-ROM is typically used to store software programs, so uh, whenever you buy a software and it is permanently stored in the CD-ROM and that is delivered to you. Uh, 
Uh, on the other hand, CDs can store uh, and CDs can store st uh, audio and video data as well as text and program instructions. So, uh, uh, different types of information can be stored in CD-ROMs. Then another variation is known as DVD-ROM. Uh, DVD stands for digital video disc. Uh, so, DVD-RAM stands for digital video disc read-only memory and it is and is being used in place of CD-ROM in many new PCs. So, nowadays this is also has become very popular and a standard DVD discs can store up to 9.4 gigabytes of data uh, enough to store an entire movie. So, you can store an entire movie into it and dual layer DVD disc can store up to 17 gigabyte. So, DVD disc can store as much data because both sides on the of, of the disc are used along with sophisticated data compression, compression technique. So, uh, in case of uh, CD-ROM, we have seen the capacity is much smaller, but in case of DVD, we are using uh, some uh, sophisticated technique uh, by which you are also doing data compression to store more data and that is the reason why uh, the storage capacity is much higher. And uh, then another variation is there, CD recordable. CD recordable means you can write only once. So, with the help of, of a special device, you can do the writing only once. So, drive allows recording personal CDs. You can create your personal CDs and uh, conventionally which you use that is CD recordable, CDR. But data cannot be overwritten once it is recorded on the data uh, or to the disk. So, this is the most common type of disk we encounter. There is another type of uh, DVD-ROM uh, uh, or CD, you can say CD rewritable. So, this variety is very costly and not very commercially successful. So, CD rewritable drive allows recording of CD of a, uh, of a CD, re-recording of a CD, you can write, uh, read just like your, it may, we may consider it as CD, CD read-write or CD-RAM, then write new data over already recorded data. So, this gives you, uh, shows you different varieties, optical compact disc, digital video disc, DVDs, uh, 4.7 inch diameter. So, one, uh, one new technique that is used here is instead of constant angular velocity, optical disc uses constant linear velocity. So, earlier we have seen that angular velocity is small because, you know, <coughs> the so, when the read write head is here, the time time that is required to read for this part is same as the, this part. So, angular velocity is same, but now what is being done in case of CD-ROM, uh, you will be, uh, so this is the center and it is written in this manner, in the form of a spiral. So, here since you are storing in the form of a spiral, so this is one particular sector, this is another sector, this is another sector and so on. So, and that is uh, uh, and you are reading using of constant linear velocity. So, you have got constant linear velocity uh, of reading, you are uh, here time, uh, time to read this part and this part is same. So, this is your constant linear velocity. So, CD-RAM uses this constant linear, uh, linear velocity and uh, there are different kinds of read-only memory. CDs are 0 0.6 gigabytes, DVDs 4.7 gigabytes, these are very common. Uh, also double-sided DVDs are available. We have already discussed about CDR, CDRW, then DVDR and DVDR-RAM. So, difference between CDR and CDRW is in case of CDR, you can write you can write only once. In case of CDRW, you can write many times. Then comes the magnetic tapes. This is as old as the magnetic disc technology. Much more, uh, it has got much more storage space. Very long access time. So you can see here, on a it is in the form of a tape, just like your audio tapes. So on a single tape, you are it is having a number of tracks, track 1, track 2, track 3, track 9. So, you can transfer parallelly 
uh, a number of bits, different bits. So, 9 bits you can transfer parallelly uh, whenever you uh, we are reading from a tape and unfortunately, it has got very long access time because you are reading sequentially. You have to start from one end and then you have to uh, go ahead just like your audio tapes. And uh, in magnet, since it is made of magnetic material, it wear out uh, very quickly because of physical contact of the read write head. And primarily these magnetic tapes, tapes were used for archival purposes. So, uh, uh, in the early years in our computer center, we had large number of magnetic tapes where they all the various programs and data were to be stored in magnetic tapes and primarily they are used in archival purposes. So, with this let us come to the, come to the end of today's lecture. So, in my next lecture we shall discuss about some other alternatives uh, um, because magnetic tapes are becoming uh, increasingly I mean becoming uh, out of uh, outdated and new technologies are coming in which I shall discuss in my next lecture. Thank you.